Welcome back. It's still the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Now time to look at the stories of the pages on national dailies. Of course, Jilly Johnson has been a regular on this segment. He joins us again. He's a senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Mr. Johnson, good morning to you. Good morning, Kofi, and good morning, Messi. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Fantastic. And um, Jimo to every one of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's uh, start with the stories or the headlines coming off the front page of the Nation uh, newspaper uh, with a big one. They've been sticking with uh, the APC crisis for the past few days, and today is no different. Buni Malami Emefiele to confer with Buhari in UK. Buni Malami Emefiele to confer with Buhari in UK. The following writers, Yobe Governor Sunny Bello Diffa, on transfer of functions, Tidibu, a party should remain democratic. Party should remain democratic. I don't know what's going on there, but a certain letter popped up uh, yesterday, purportedly from Mai Malabuni, handing over the party temporarily to uh, Governor Sunny Bello while he goes to Dubai to treat himself. Um, is this a coup d'etat? 11 killed in Kaduna, Berwe bandits, gunmen, raids. Sad one. Umahi begs judge, gets order to stay. Excitement as Ulubado is installed finally. Banks suspend ATM POS transactions abroad. And of course, uh, we have more stories from the nation newspaper Chilim wins beauty pageant in prison. Lega suspends NURTW activities. APC needs 21-day notice to change Buni, says INEC, and declines invitation to party's neck meeting. Uh, Jam won't extend UTME registration and PDP's neck meeting to hold March 15. Those are some of the headlines on the front page of The Nation. Away from the Nation newspaper, uh, let's take a quick look at the punch and find out what the punch got to say this morning. 208 court cases threatened the APC convention. Uh, it's really, really sad and unfortunate. And a lot of people have been questioning whether or not the APC convention slated for the 26th of March would definitely happen as Boni fights back. That's what you have. 208 court cases threatens APC convention. Boni fights back. Nine cases challenging the interim panel seek indefinite postponement. Boni Yahoo Yahoo governors against APC progress. Akira Dulu is quoted, and Yobe governor wrote Bello to act while abroad for treatment state uh, letter. That's also another writer there. Another one says the Jet A1 airlines allege Racketing uh, the NCAA may ground planes soon. Talking about um, you know the fact that the airlines might probably just shut down the operation, and a lot of people that has thrown a lot of Nigerians uh, to serious panic. Federal government seeks U.S. funding for gas supply to Europe amid Russia boycott. Nominees kick as a boycott orders Mai to retain seat. You also have Russia, Ukraine. High food fuel prices loom in Nigeria. Others say the International Monetary Fund. I mean, constantly, uh, it feels like the International Monetary Fund is very concerned with Nigeria. And Nigeria might not be in her leaders, not even understanding what's going on in the country. PDP plans peace panel over a door crisis. Eyes 2023 victory. That's also another one. And just before we move away, you have insurgency. Disseminated 30,000 Boko Haram ISWAP fighters surrendered, says uh, SGF. Workers must sack self. Workers must sack self-centered professional politicians in 2023. That's what the NLC is saying. And uh, uh, just as we're looking at the punch again, uh, shortly before we move away, please tighten security as MC Oluomo does NURTW. And withdraws members. That's serious. Okay, please arraign Fanny Kaya. There is a strange wife for alleged um, cyber crime. And these are some of the headlines on the punch this morning. Let's uh, turn attention to the headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. Um, they are studying and you know highlighting the aviation aviation sector challenges with a big headline there. We may shut down Nigeria's airspace, NCAA boss wants 
Aeon laments aviation fuel scarcity, rejects marked as blackmail. Jet A1 climbs to 700 naira per liter. Nape warns it may cripple the economy. What is happening to Nigeria? Don't test the patience of Benue people, or Tom warns herdsmen. Another six persons killed in fresh herders' attacks. Don't vacate your offices. Court tells Umahi deputy. Eboni speaker, 14 others file appeal. Stay of execution over sack. Ogun Assembly misappropriated 700 million naira, forged the OBJ's OBJ company's document, EFCC alleges, that's a, an interesting one, PDP gets judgment date in suit to sack Zamfara governor. Others, April 8, holds neck meeting Tuesday. And it's the same judge, uh, Iyayoko, who that case is before. COVID-19, Nigeria among 35 countries where one in every four household starves. NNPC worried as communities shift loyalty to informal security operatives. Why APC may not hold March 26 National Convention? And that writer, a writer to that headline, only Yahoo, Yahoo governors are with Buni, says Akere Dolu. <laughs> Finally, NURTW suspends Lagos MC Oluomo indefinitely. Well, he seems to have also suspended them in Lagos. Those are the stories coming up on the front page of the Daily Independent. Well, away from the Daily Independent newspaper this morning, let's take a quick look at uh, the Nigerian Tribune. I'm looking at the front page of the Nigerian Tribune convention crisis. Yahoo Yahoo governors back Bunny, Akari Dulu alleges. And if the president, I mean, you have some reports saying the president has sacked, uh, you know, the caretaker committee, which of course was led by Bunny. It doesn't mean the president is part of the Yahoo Yahoo system. Uh, anyways, uh, you find as Boni letter transferring to Bello surfaces. I did not get any letter from Boni. Uh, Bello, after seven years of APC in power, Tunubu says we still have a lot of work to do. Yahaya Bello, shield of APC in Nigeria. That's what the Senate president is quoted to say. Aviation fuel, you have the um, airline saying we may shut down nation's airspace as reps. You also find reps blow hot on cartel operating in the aviation sector. And NPC says there's enough product. Russia-Ukraine war taking toll on our businesses. Uh, that's what NATO major marketers cry out. It says diesel unaffordable. And just before we move away, Passengers stranded as Ibadan Lagos train runs out of diesel. And NURTW suspend MCO Luoma. Uh, that's also another one. We are no longer members of NURTW. He replies, uh, uh, Titan, the CP Titan security in Lagos. Wives of Kebi slain soldiers attack commanding officers' residents. And these are some of the headlines this morning on the Nigerian Tribune. Well, it's time for us to have uh, G.D. Johnson join the conversation this morning. Good morning, G.D. Johnson. It's good to have you join us. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Kofi. And good morning to our viewers all over the world. All right. G.D., let's leave it open to you now. Which of the headlines? I mean, today seemed to be very interesting, very choked up. Which of them caught your attention as we went through the pages of our national dailies? Yes. The APC House of Commotion. <laughs> um that um it's it's it should call for concern for every one of us that they uh, put not only apc even ptp um the two major parties upon which will be public administration in 2023 none of it could put his own house in order and it's instructive and it's interesting that if someone cannot take care of his domestic affair he's not given the responsibility of managing the community affair. And that's what we have witnessed. We have seen parties not having respect for the constitution of their own party, the major fabric upon which they build their values and their principle. And from 1999 to date, we have seen that, and we have seen that someone that does not have respect for the for the values, for the principles, for the ethos of its party, deals the basic foundation that establish it as a party. 
with levity, treat it as if it does not exist. And then you want to entrust the responsibility of managing what constitutes the Nigerian nation into such. And that's why we have seen different degrees of level of impunity. Any party that does not have respect for the constitution of his party will not have respect for the constitution of Nigeria if it gets into power. It's very, very clear. And we have seen that character as being part and parcel of PDP. We have seen that character demonstrated by APC in the last in the last in the last several years that they have been in power, that even the alleged national leader of the party is saying that um, they don't have democratic democratic principles. So it's it's, it's rather 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 unfortunate. In the first instance, there's no provisions in APC constitution for a caretaker committee. One. Two, they have that arrangement because Adams the Shemale was removed. However, two years plus down the line, APC has not been able to hold its convention, has not been able to hold convention that a Bunina transmit letter. There's no provisions within the constitution that talks about if the chairman is excused, if the chairman of the Catholic Committee and extraordinary national executive committee is exiting, this is the arrangement which we have in place. So he's now transmitting letter to 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 Belo, the go from Buni to Belo that okay, I want to go abroad for medical treatment. So you take over from me. But under normal circumstances, if you have an arrangement, we are by the head or the chairman of the committees from the north. The deputy usually comes from the south. So if you have a democratic arrangement, if you have a nice arrangement, the person that should take over from Buni shouldn't be somebody from the north, but somebody from the south. But since it's a house of commotion, and mo most of the people that are in my generation will understand one of the drama series which was Fuji House of Commotion. So we are seeing politics as of commotion, both in PDP and in APC. And it is not good for our polity that if the two parties upon which will build our public administration because let's not deceive ourselves. There's no other party that will win the election in 2023 with the exception of either APC or PDP. These are the two parties that all the major actors converge. And that itself is, should give a lot of concern for Nigeria. In a do, in a do state, the PDP is setting up a peace panel to look into a do crisis. There is a crisis in Oshun State. PDP had the primaries in Oshun State and for gubernatorial primaries in Oshun State. It produced two candidates. When are we going to? I was talking to a friend who happens to be a senior journalist, and I told him that one of the things we need, I need to do, is to re remove the issue of substitution or no substitution. Or, why should you substitute the candidate? Once you have done the primaries, the candidate should emerge from the primaries. What you can have is replacement, and that should be in the case of death. That should be the only base that you can only replace once you have done the primary. And I think as witnessed the primaries, you have picked your candidate. You cannot substitute. Okay. Uh, uh, candidate. Jere so, Johnson, interesting. Um, uh, with the state of the nation as it is, um, you see a, the party, uh, uh, the All Progressives Congress, who is the ruling party in the government, like you said, is not able to put its house in order. Maybe the way the economy, the way the country is, security, you know, and, uh, and the Naira and everything is just a reflection of the chaos in the party because the economy is in chaos right now. We'll look at the aviation sector as we go on. Let's stay with the crisis in the party. Uh, let's look at this headline. Buli Mala, Buni Malami uh, immediately to confer with Buhari in UK. Buni Malami okay. immediately to come February in UK. That's on the front page of the Nation newspaper, uh, by the way. So the, the governor of a Nigerian state who left the country to go to Dubai to go and seek medical treatment, he's saying he will fly from Dubai to London to meet the president of Nigeria who left Nigeria to go to London to treat himself. Uh, how bizarre is that, J.D. Johnson? It's funny that you're having the central bank governor and then the, I don't care if Buni goes to see Buhari, but you're having the central bank governor and the attorney general of the federation. Whereas the president himself said by proclamation that all activities relating to governance has been handed over to the vice president. But you see a situation here by the attorney general, which some people in some certain quarters are, are accused of being um, the stumbling block in the wheel of progress of managing the party and of managing the nation going to what are they going to see the president for the vice president is here in, in nigeria they could discuss whatever they want to discuss if indeed the president has gone for medical rest 
of a medical on medical trip. Why are they going to London to disturb him? So we have transferred government governors from Nigeria to 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 to, to, to for Buni's case, Buni has to see the president because Buni himself lost out in the power play that is happening within the APC. Fakir Dulu, the, the governor of the governor of Tondo State, and then the former MB president to have accused some of the PDP, uh, some of the APC governors that are supporting Buni to be Yao Yao. It is very, very instructive for him to have used that term that it is Yao Yao APC governors that are submitting. So those are those ones committing um obtaining money by fraud or are they involved in what them um, hush puppy so we have hush puppy like governor quote unquote in, in in nigeria and then we have them in apc and they sit in the national executive committee of the apc and they manage the affairs of nigeria where well, the proof that you have your Yao citizen is a function of you having your Yao 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 governor so you have your because what you have in, in, in the state is a reflection of the leadership. So we have Yao Yao governor, we have Yao Yao pastor, we have Yao Yao journalist too. <laughs> well, I don't know if I see myself fall into that category, but I, I doubt we do. <laughs> I, like I doubt we do. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand. But you know, Johnson, isn't the president to, to blame, you know, in all of this? Sorry, I'm using the blame word here. Because uh, you remember uh, last week or the upper week, when he was meant to meet with the APC governors, or I think either the governors or one of the highest bodies in the party, he didn't meet with them and instead hopped on the plane to go to Kenya, you know. And in the midst of all the crisis in the country right now, he's in London as if there's nothing going on. Meanwhile, his house is on fire. Also, please respond to this uh, headline, still from the Nation newspaper. APC needs 21-day notice to change Munise's INEC. Declines invitation to parties neck meeting. I don't know if you saw the letter purportedly from Buni um, saying, you know, uh, Madali, stay in my state till I come back. And he also copied Anik as well. His, the governor who, who is now the leader of the party is saying he never received any letter. So your thoughts on, first of all, President Buhari, the question I asked, and then this headline. Well, I think that the president has left a lot of things undone with respect to the party. One, allowing the um, and the theoretical committees tend not to be extended and extended over extended over time. That is antithetical to democratic norms and practices. For you to have a theoretical arrangement running the party, now and that means that this, if they could succeed in doing that, they could have a theoretical arrangement in running in running Nigeria. And you could see that with what is happening with Emifili and um, Malami going to going to meet the the president in London to confer with me. That, that means that what we have in Nigeria with the president absence is a critical element. That's my thought. I might be wrong, but it's my opinion. I'm entitled to my own to my own opinion. Um where with 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 INEC issue, I don't think INEC has any APC could work around it's just mere technicalities. You see that the issue of letter popping up left, right, and center now with Boni saying that he's going for medical treatment. Now, would they need, if something should happen by force major or by the force major by which they don't have any control over, uh, will, will the INEC tell them to wait for, for, for 21 days for them to change? So what they need to do is to tidy up the, the documentation. If 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 a Boni should resign today, will INEC tell them that they need 21 days for them to change? So APC could write INEC and tell INEC, you know what, we, I think that um, is what INEC is just doing is grandstanding. It's grandstanding and it's a voter face. Documentation from the APC will solve that problem. And I think that they've identified the problem. They started, they started the process by saying that there's a letter from Puni to Bilu, although Bilu is denying that um, there is uh, that letter from him because acceptance of that letter itself will show an arrangement of transference of power and if Bunish should come back, they might want to get that power back and it leads to the issue of litigation. And then we could see that APC itself is faced with a series of litigation. There is a particular um, headline which we read that 208 court cases threatens an APC conversion. We have a situation whereby there are 72 state state con state um, state executive committees of the APC because at each state you have two you have two parallel two parallel conventions. So if you have 72, that means that 774 local governments times two. And then uh, if you go 774 local government times two, if you do that arrangement and we see there's 10 words per each of the local government, that means we have close to about 7,000 um, parallel executive at the world level, um, um, 774 times two, 
at the at the at the local government it's level. It's a really great, it's a, it's a, it's a really great state. picture. You know, maybe you should make that yeah. seventy three, but because in the Kwaibom state they had three uh, parallel uh, uh, congresses there. You know? and, and and you begin to and you begin to wonder what's really happening. That if a party cannot come together, because the basic definition of political parties, people that have similar interests, share the same values, come together to form a party under one ideology in order to contest election, win election, and control government. But if you have a situation whereby the party cannot 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 come together to hold you, then you have you have you have crisis. Is in this APC is not only excused from this; it's affecting. PDP too. You have that arrangement in in, in, in PDP, and uh, I think it's affected. It's like you pointed out, Kofi, the state of the economy because the parties that are meant they can't manage their own affairs. It's like a man that cannot control his household, and you want to make him to be the head of the community. Someone that has no control over his household, he cannot take care of his household. You make him the head of the community. We say this thing in local parlance. We say charity begins at home. He, begins begins at home and we have seen that these parties the two parties but essentially it's apc we are looking at because it's the ruling party now cannot put their house they are not put their house in in you know that is unfortunate and my Chita advice Johnson. to nigeria let me just end this message please thank you my advice to nigeria come 2023 is for us to look out very very well and elect somebody whose household is in perfect order we first look at what is the arrangement of that person in his household as a person, and then in the party. Thank you. Merci. You can come on board, because I've not heard your voice since. Well, uh, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, it talks about the issues going around the aviation sector. Airlines to shut down operation over fuel scarcity. And that's what the Punch is quoted to say. What 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 do you really make of this? I mean, just yesterday, uh, we also have a situ we had a situation under reports. I mean, the videos were actually viral because we had a uh, real time uh, reporting via you know those who were passengers on that particular train where uh, diesel actually the, the the train ran out of diesel uh, heading from Lagos to Ibadan. Yeah, well. well um if that had been an aircraft, what do you think would happen to that aircraft? It come down. Jida Johnson, do we still have you on the line? Crash it. Okay. We probably seem to be having some... crashes and people die. Because when the... Yeah, I'm still sitting from your end. Messi, can you hear me? Now, we can hear you clearly. Go ahead with your thoughts. So, 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 I, I, I recall in 2012 when... Um, it's just like I said. If 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 that train had been an aircraft, that would have been a crash, and then we start investigation. I wouldn't know that this is the cause of that crash of that of that of that airline. And we are seeing a situation whereby adulterated fuel could end up being used to fly aircraft. We are seeing the National Civil Aviation Authority threatening to. Um, to shut down the Nigerian airspace. Well, technically, the Nigerian airspace is shut down because the commercial airline operators can't have access to diesel, even if they have uh, to jet fuel, even if they have access to it, can they afford it? Do we even know the nature of the fuel they are selling? They are selling to them. This is a major issue that we need to look to. So, is all, there's already a shutdown. We could have had a shutdown of this program, like I told you. There's no light in my hood. Um, there is no fuel, and then, um, if not for nature, would we have been able to connect with, with, with this program? So we have a shutdown. The society is already shut down. You could see that government is shut down because government has relocated to London. The party is shut down because the head of so, the party. So has I, I think that, that to, that's some sarcasm coming from you there. No, no, it's a shutdown. No, it's, it's a shutdown. True, it's a shutdown because things can't get done because. Power is concentrated in individual and not in system. Even when the president by proclamation says that I've handed over to the vice president and then the attorney general, the chief law officer, that should be the main enforcer of that, is traveling abroad. Let's see. It's, um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. I thank God for the life of those people that were inside that train. That was not an airline. If it's an airline, they would have come down in Jesus' name and then would have put the nation in money for 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 for. For, for for human error, grievous human error.
It's, uh, it's unfortunate. Some uh, uh, point I was making earlier on a trending topic segment was um, uh, one of the things about the railway industry in the country is that it's still in government hands, um, namely the Nigeria Railway Corporation. And maybe we should be looking at uh, privatizing it. But, uh, Jenny Johnson, yeah. talking about um, all the issues bedeviling the nation, um, we just pray that we can limp across the line into 2023. And uh, maybe, I'm sure you agree, 2023 can come faster for us to just um, uh, have an end to the nightmare that we're all going through. Sorry about uh, the light situation in your area. If we want to go into what the Transmission Company of Nigeria is saying about the generating uh, capacity of the country in terms of megawatts we have today, that's another sad story. But um, on Tuesday, the convoy of the Deputy Governor of KB State was attacked, and you're very aware of this, um, held in an exchange of gunfire, gun battle with so-called bandits for over two hours. These bandits um, living with at least 19 security operatives dead in their week. Today we're hearing on the front page of the Punch newspaper, uh, ins insurgents decimated. Three, 30,000 Boko Haram and Isra fighters surrendered, says SGF. Insurgents decimated. 30,000 Boko Haram, Isra fighters surrendered, says SGF. Um, maybe, maybe, would you say that this uh, current increase in banditry in the country may be taken away from the successes that the government is recording against Boko Haram uh, because it seems like Boko Haram attacks have been reducing in the recent recent weeks. Now, you are saying, is the, is the Secretary to the Federal Government, is he the spokesperson for Nigerian um, defense? Is he the Chief of Defense Staff? Is he within the poor view of his office? To provide us with such information that for me as far as i'm concerned is a political statement when the information you are providing does not match up with the reality that you have on ground and you just share the story if the convoy of the deputy governor could be attacked and that was the convoy of the deputy governor of the state of the attorney general of the federation KB state and 19 security operatives were abducted and then the the following day, the SGF is coming out to say that, okay, we have won the war. Those are just political statements as far as I'm concerned. It's very, very clear that we still have security security challenges that need to be dealt with. We have a lot of disruption by non-state non -state actors. If we relate that to what is happening in Lagos State concerning NLTW and non, uh, national NLTW and um, Lagos NLTW and government taking over at the parks, as far as those of us that are aware of that, um, there is a security implications of that development. And that's why a lot of people that is very, very knowledge that are very, very knowledgeable about how the NLTW operates and the politics of the NLTW, we pray for a peaceful and amicable resolution of that problem because that's important crisis, um, violence and mayhem um, into, 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 into various Lagos Lagos community, we, we've seen that, and we, we saw that some people were arrested because of violence in the Dumota, and we have not had anything concerning that cases. That that particular case we've seen in in, in Ojo too in the last. I'm talking about in the last twenty years. So when you look at security security issues, not limited to banditry alone, it, kidnapping and all of that. That has not been seriously dealt with, and the SGF is play, just playing to the gallery to justify his appointment and his. He speak to his masters as far as an average Nigerian is concerned. He's just he's just playing the ostrich. Mm. But just before we let you go, GD Johnson, uh, we're looking at the Tribune now where it talks about the fact that we're experiencing fuel scarcity and the IMF is concerned, they're saying that the, a lot will go on. You also have marketers crying out that this conflict that's going on with Russia and Ukraine would really tell a lot on us. I mean, how did we get to this point, really? Do, did we, do we really import from Russia and Ukraine? And if we, we do, even, don't we have neighboring not, countries? We, we are not even, uh, we don't have such trading business with. Russia supplies 70% of the energy for Germany. Uh, Russia supplies to America. Now I'm just putting it across to you. Now if you are Russia, you are a trader. Who would you trade with? You trade with people that have Naira or you trade with people that have Euros? Or dollars they can say whatever they want to say and they can play to the gallery without russia or no russia 
without the Ukraine crisis, we have already we have always had crisis with the energy sector. If you are a major player and we have one of the best um, crude oil in in the world, and then we can't refine the product and we can't tap in into what is happening globally. If Russia is supplying America and Europe is uh, America is putting sanction on Russia, this is a time we should tap into it and we should supply energy to Germany and to other European countries that is that are highly dependent on Russia, but not. We we'll rather import our crude oil and we we'll rather export our crude oil and import the finished uh, product back to Nigeria. Jimmy Nigeria Johnson, is the only nation. They, they actually want to supply gas to Europe. Uh, and they're asking for United States to provide funding for that. That's federal government. Exactly. To provide funding for that. And then you know where the funding will go to. That's areas where you can go and borrow money. You can borrow money for investment. That's, you make money back, but you don't borrow money for infrastructure. Infrastructure that cannot pay itself back. But we have seen this government has borrowed money for, 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 for a lot of infrastructure. You borrow money for investment. When you borrow money okay. for investment, you will pull back the we money. We have to go. You pay back. So, I'm so sorry, Jilly Johnson. I'm so sorry about the interruption, uh, but uh, time is not being on the side. Uh, it's a great picture uh, from the, 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 the headlines today uh, on the national dailies, but you've done justice to them in your analysis. Jilly Johnson is a senior lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Thank you so much for your time, sir. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. And have a wonderful weekend. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Jilly Johnson. And that's it on the papers this morning. We will return on Monday and just before then. Let's let you know what happened today in history.